Hi, how's everybody doing tonight? It's Sean here with another video, and uh, everybody, somewhat, uh, I got an email in there asking what kind of rack I'm playing with. Uh, I got the bobble at uh, 110 secure drive, and uh, it's about 10 ounces. And uh, before this racket, I was playing with the profiles, which are 95s, and uh, they're about 13 ounces, almost a pound. <laughs> But uh, I grew up playing uh, tennis in the 80s and 90s, so I'm um, sorry, set, you know, late 70s, early 80s. My first racket was a wooden racket, so we were taught how to hit you know, with a conventional grip, you know. And then as I got around 14 or 15, I started messing around with, you know, different grips because the ball would bounce real high. And then that's when uh, Crickstein was around. Uh, and he was hitting with a Western forehand, and it was pretty cool to see for the first time, but like a successful tennis uh, pro, and he is around a little bit, he's a little older than me. So I was like around 12, and he was around 16 or 17, beating uh, top players in the world with that style of play. And then of course, Agassi with the Eastern grip, he, uh, you know, taught you that you can play in between the grips, and a lot of the pros use a, a semi-Western grip. And what these grips are is, uh, is the bevels. So you'll see the top one is really like your backhand for your right hand player. It would be, it'd be like a backhand. And then right here, that bevel right there is an Eastern grip, I mean, a continental grip. And that's what you would use for your serves. And then um, your, you would use your volleys that way. It helps you keep your racket up like that, you know, for volleys. And uh, it's right on there. And also for your serve, so you can get the pronation and the and the, the right type of contact when you're hitting the ball, uh, instead of doing a pancake serve like that. Um, I know a friend of mine that uses a Western grip on. He serves flat, and it, he, he's got a good serve on it. But he doesn't use any other serves besides that serve. It's a flat serve, so he just you know hits takes the racket like this, throws the ball up, hits hits it like that. Uh, I use my legs more and my feet are closer. Like when I first started learning how to play that, would be, my feet would, my stance would be like that. And then I, it'd be just weird, but I was younger and, and smaller. And as I got older, you know, I just put my feet together like this, on a service line, and kind of do that. Throw it up, throw it out in front of you. You want the ball to be out in front of you. So, I had a match coming up. I haven't played a, a tennis match in, um, since 1998 or 99. Last time I played was a tournament called Light Up the Shores. And uh, I came in second place in, in singles and then I won doubles. Um, then I had to have surgery done and it got me angry and uh, kind of made me, I didn't, uh, I couldn't move around as well as I used to. So I stopped playing tennis. It was a bad decision. But of recent times, I di diagnosed with the diabetes too, uh, about nine months ago. So I started playing tennis to lose weight and to, 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 to uh, you know, get in shape for my upcoming surgeries. And then I found other people that were going through health issues too. So they were watching my channel and giving me support. So uh, the next, next week I have a opponent. Apparently this fella hasn't lost and uh, it's called Play Your Courts. So I signed up for that, and then um, I, I was asked to play around the 28th, and uh, seems like a nice fella, but I've never seen him play, and I, like I said, haven't played uh, in a tournament style of, of tennis, because uh, I think you get points for your wins and stuff, like, and play your tennis, or play your court. So I think you get points and stuff like that. So I wasn't sure what level that I play at now because it's been a long time since I played but the last level that I was you know played at I was sanctioned at a 4.5 that's what my level was before and uh you know some days I'd be playing at like a 5.0 level on the clay especially I learned how to play on clay so I play a lot better on clay strategically and all that other stuff so the point of me making videos is to see how like how I can improve in tennis and um, watch what I'm doing wrong, try different rackets, get a quick and, and try that out and share it with the community. And uh, there are a lot of good players on, on YouTube. Uh, Tennis Tune, I watched that fella. 
and, uh, and I enjoy watching his content. He plays a lot of singles. He's a younger fella. He's a new brat. He used to come by uh, and, uh, you know, said some nice things on my channel. Uh, so I watched that, and I, went, I watched Winston do in uh, his matches, and uh, I watched uh, Purr Cells, and then uh, also this other guy, Simon, uh, Simon Food. I watch him, and uh, there's Tennis Academy, there's a bunch of people that I watch. So there, I also got another email asking what I do before I start practicing, like how I loosen up. So I have a jump rope, and I'll jump rope for a few minutes, uh, you know, a couple of times just to get my legs going. And then I always, will, when I even when I coach, I start in the middle of the court, I cut the court off, it's called mini, mini tennis or whatever, and practice first and then bring it back here. So tonight, I never use this oscillator, and since I've never seen my opponent play, I'm going to be working on my volleys, and I'm going to work on some serves. Um, particularly with this racket, it's much bigger than the one I've been playing with for about 25 years to profile, which I can light the ball up, you know, on that. But I noticed on my backhand side that my arms are closer to my body than they would normally be when I'm hitting with the other racket, and I think it's because of the size of this one, so that's some other stuff I'll work on. So I have a couple hours to, to play out here before they turn the lights off. So uh, let's do some serves, and let me tell you what I do before I, I start playing. Uh, I'm 52 years old, and I have two replaced hips, and uh, I'm not in the best physical shape right now, but this is what I do to start the, before I start playing. I'll just get the work going. And uh, what that'll do is get your circulation going in your legs, get you ready to go a little bit. So if you got your scrum from pine and you had a match and you need to get loosened up real quick, you can go get a jump rope, make the good work, like two or three dollars or Walmart or anywhere. And uh, jump or rope is really good for you too. Um, most all the pros and everybody, you know, that's serious competitors uh, in, uh, in uh, training, they all have a jump rope. I have one in my bag, which is this one, but I got one at the house. So. Let's try some of the serves that I got this out of the way. And I'll show you the racket I put in. Now, they're both the same thickness. You can see they're both the same thickness. Only this is 13 ounces, it's a small radius. And this is strung at 48, 44. The mains are at 48 tension, and the strings, the crosses are at 44. Both Wilson top spin. This is 17 gauge, and this is our 16 gauge, and that's 17 gauge. And this one's a little different. I got a little higher end string. The racket's strung at 50 pounds. It has Slinko uh, G, G on it, Hyper G on the on the mains, which is that that's 16 gauge, and then. The crosses are Genesis, Topspin Genesis, and then that's at 17 gauge. Uh, um, yeah, that's at 17 gauge. So I have 16 on the mains and 17 on the crosses at 50 pounds. So I could go a little looser on this and it probably give me more touch with the net and stuff, but let's try some serves. We'll get loosened up and then we'll turn this machine on because I never, oh shit, let me get this light. seen this person play that I'm going to be playing against, and I think he's undefeated. 
we're going to work on stuff like, you know, volume in your serves, obviously, is, a, is important because you can put a lot of pressure on people just coming into the net. Make them pass you, you know what I mean? They may win at one point, but in the long run, you don't, if you go in a few times, put pressure on them at the net, uh, you, then you can play from the baseline. They won't know when you're coming in or in one shot, you know? So it's a strategy. And uh, I'm not that tall of a person, I'm only 5'7". So that to me, I think it's an advantage when I'm serving because I can get more spin, you know, because I use my legs and stuff, especially on clay. And I'm pretty quick for my age and my, my disabilities. So I'm pretty fast going up and down, but going from side to side, I'm a little slower. That I'm working on it, so that's why I say serving and volume because that will help me uh, use my 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 tools God gave me, which is speed and quickness, and also I'm pretty decent with volleys. I have pretty good touch and stuff. I'm just playing doubles all my life, and, and you know mostly playing people that are um, baseliners, and I grew up playing a baseline, so I'm not a serving volleyer by no means, but I do use it occasionally and. I'm from old school where you do chips and come in and you chip the ball and come in. So it's something that you don't see often. And I have a lot of old school ways of playing. And I think that's why a lot of people like uh, enjoy some of the content that I do because they're younger guys and they're younger people. Or they're just more into hitting with a lot of top spin and more modern stuff. So we're going to go over some stuff that my friends, well, I don't know them personally, but I watch their videos, like Nick from Interior to Tennis, he's got a lot of great tips. Uh, Peter Becker, he's got a lot of great tips. Uh, two Minute Tennis, Ryan, he's got a lot of great tips. Ian uh, from Essential Tennis, a lot of good tips. He's got mad talent. These people are talented. Um, that guy, Mark, I just think is a little screwy, but he is an amazing player, and you can't take that from him. And I really enjoy watching him play. He's smart. Not only is he good, he's highly... His tennis intelligence is, is very high, so yeah, I like watching people like that. So let's get to some practice. Sorry about the delay, but the lights go off and it's going to be a lot here. So the first one I'm going to try is the flat serve. And that pops the sleeve off on the head. I want to show you that because you want that to happen like that. You want to throw it out in front of you. off the racket and all you're doing is hitting the ball on the side. Now this other one is a little trickier and it's a lot of people are trying to learn how to do it better. Myself included. This is a we try to hit a We're gonna kick on the hit on the side of the ball around six o'clock and try to scoop it like that. So I throw the ball a little bit over to my left when I to get the play like curve and let the ball come down a little bit. It's not a good toss. higher I noticed that when I try to kick serve I feel a little bit behind my head because I'm brushing the ball a little bit. It's something I'm working on. I can't my phone working on it. So it's gonna be a little kick on it. It's short, 
you know, and then as you get warmed up on both sides, you go from back there. Same thing, I just go, I go flat, slice, try to kick it, three balls, four of them, so, and you go out wide on the flat field. Try to hit the cone, it's not good. One more flat field. left leg to balance. You know? Like I said, I'm not that tall too. So. That's better. Now, try the same thing from back here. You gotta, you gotta go flat through. That, you got a slicer. You take that, hit the top of the cape, that's not bad. You can see what's going, how it's going in though. You can pass that a little bit higher. Some people mess up their nets because of pickle ball time. Same thing, throw the ball. Let's slice on it. Chop the ball. It was cold earlier, now I'm warm. I like using the cones, even if you don't hit them. It gives you a good bookmark of where the ball's going and you know, a good, uh, good idea of where the placement is. Flat. Try a couple of other serves with you hitting on the seven o'clock time. through the ball is what you're doing, literally. Another shot, you see, people are literally hitting on the opposite side of the ball. So it feels a lot weirder than the other ball. The other back you hit. Like a flat serve, you're just gonna throw it up in the air and hit through it. And like that. Yeah, I'll show you on this side too. See a flat serve, you'll just take the ball Continental grip, throw the ball up the corner. That wasn't a good toss, but you get the point. You're hitting flat down on it, and then twice you're hitting on the side. You can even practice with your feet, you know what I'm saying? Have a ball that's just how it does stuff, you know? It's weird. It's like golf or any other sport. Practice out 
angles. I use, see, I don't, uh, when I was younger, I always liked the power gain, but I feel that accuracy and, um, you know, using accuracy and being precise about where you want to hit the ball is more important than hitting the ball hard. You want to be able to, to really be able to place the ball on your serve anywhere you want to. It doesn't matter how fast it is. If you watch this guy, Ben, from, uh, he's uh, the most exhausting player or whatever. People are, are, are trolling him, saying he's a pusher or whatever. But if you watch this guy play and you watch, you know, the game of tennis, this dude has a, so much spin and backspin on his shots that it's very difficult for even these top five, oh, four, five players to tee off on this shot because of the slice and how much spins on it. You have to generate your own pace. And the same with this dude's serve. He's got a lot of slice and he plays, he's right-handed and he plays left-handed. So uh, he's playing left-handed for strategical purposes. And then people are saying you can beat this guy. The only way you beat a player like that guy is to bring him into the net and pass him. Because if you get him from running from side to side, they love that that style of play. They love it. They'll be out there all day with the best players like that. And it don't matter to them if they're winning 6-0 or losing 5-0. It doesn't matter. They're going to keep playing the same way. And to beat those type of players, you, do, you have to do two things. You have to bring them into the net and pass them because they're very uncomfortable at the net, most of them. Or two, they're gonna, you're going to have to go into the net and they're going to throw lobs up in the air and you're going to have to be able to put those lobs in a way where they're going to be in defensive struggle the entire time that you're playing against them so and then also when you're at the net you got to hit the volleys to make them so there's those two ways to be pushers you know because they're going to hit with a lot of spin a lot of slice and you can start playing that way too you could slice the ball back to them you know it'll be slice against slice but the whole thing, like I'm saying, when you come out to practice, especially when you're playing, practicing against someone you've never even seen play tennis before, you have to think about your weaknesses and where you're at on, on some of the things you do wrong. So you work on those first, and then your strengths. You'll work on hitting on your strengths afterwards because in the middle of the match, when you're hitting with these people, they're going to realize that you're not able to do certain things and at the amateur level, or even at the pro level, you're just gonna keep going right at that that same weakness until you know, until they win. So that's why I'm working on things. And I really don't care what people say about me. You know, I'm not, you know, like I telling me that I can't play, but I know none of them want to play me. Like I will embarrass some of these folks, especially on my return serves. I'm not being a jerk at often, but I had a lot of guys trash talking me, and I've seen how they serve. And if they don't get their second serve in, I literally be standing there in the middle right here waiting for their ball, then they hit a kick serve because that's what they're gonna go to. And then that's my strength. That's how I learned how to play is getting the ball on the fly. I don't let it bounce up high. I don't let it go up past a certain thing. So I'll be putting pressure on their serve and then they'll just start double faulting and stuff. It's happened many a time. I've done that before. I've hit a great return of serve and then Ever, you know, the whole entire match, these people start double faulting because in the back of their head, they're like, if I don't get my first serve in, my second serve is trash, and they're gonna, you know, tee off on it. So when I serve, I don't always show them the best things that I can do at serving. Like I may start to match off with a kick serve or a slice serve or my version of a kick serve, but I'll get the ball in play and make that ball playable, uh, every ball playable when I'm doing my serves. And then as I get a lead, I can start opening up, or if I'm down here or there, if I'm down 30, 40, and I got a first serve, I might try a risky shot out wide, you know, on the, on the angles to get an ace and get back in the match, that kind of stuff. But you gotta play within your abilities, and in your abilities, you have to learn to make them better. And the only way to do that is to work on fundamentals. And the fundamental thing is just like, you know, getting the ball in play.
lot faster with this racket than it does that one. So we're gonna we're gonna route them around these balls up. like a Persian or something. Somebody left the poor animal out here and is wild as a nomad at this point. So I bring cat food and she was just over at the net, over, I mean over at the fence with, with a little thing over there. She's sitting over there waiting for me to finish playing tennis and get so she can get her can of food. She's a good cat. So I don't know how this is going to come out of here. Oh, it's coming on.
batteries. It's too dangerous though. It's one of the things I don't like about that. You're pushing the chain, you're pushing it to stop. And the machine just keeps running. And then uh, the balls get stuck sometimes. So I'm not mad at how I was hitting just now. Uh, that's really cool exercise. I've never done that before. I've never had the oscillator for volleys. And a lot. I can't even tell you how many times this has happened to me personally in doubles and single, singles, especially doubles. When you're standing there and your friend serving or whoever and they return the ball and the ball gets in play and then you're like, say, say for instance, you're at the baseline and a guy... There's a guy standing there on my side, and then the guy's serving, and the dude at the net, you hit a backhand, two-hand backhand cross court, and then the guy hits another deep shot. And then I'll go and take my, you know, ball be here, I'll take the ball and I'll lob it over that guy's head, right? So now, he's gonna run back to the guy, or you know, the other dude that's on the baseline that wasn't playing net, the person playing net. It's gonna switch over to that side and the other guy's gonna switch over to get the lob. And I'm going in and then this dude fires a ball that was supposed to be going down the line. But I'm in like what you call no man's land, like right here or whatever. And the ball bounces right there and all you can do is get your racket on it and pop it up. And try to put some kind of spin. And not only do you get to have to get the ball, but you're gonna have to put some kind of spin on the ball so they don't tee off on it because at that point your partner is at the net also so you're both kind of sitting ducks so that's why i like that that drill i just did there's a few i missed because i was trying to uh a couple shots i was trying to make it come back over on my side so i was trying to hit enough slice where it bounced on the opponent's side and didn't jump over on my side like i did the other day and i practiced that shot like i was telling you and i've done it quite a few times in matches just because I practice it. And I got good, you know, my hands are, are soft. They say I can touch. But a lot of times you don't even get a chance to use that perfect volley form that they're talking about where you're stepping into it. Sometimes you gotta do poke. It's a called poke volley. Because the ball's coming at you and you can just you just have to poke it over. And then you can stand in and you can set up for another one. But you can get you see how it's moving back and forth. And I do like that part of it. Like I said, when sometimes when you're pushing the keychain, you won't turn off and the balls get stuck sometimes. So you'll be like, okay, you're in the middle of hitting the ball and you're doing really well. And then the ball machine gets stuck and you gotta stop, scooch the balls around, go back and fit, you know, uh, finish doing what you're doing. But uh, not mad at that at all. And there's, you know, 150 balls you get a chance to hit, 140 something balls you get a chance to practice on. So I usually do two to three times off the machine. Like tonight, I did the volley. You see me do a bucket serve working on that. Now, before I leave tonight, I will come back here from the baseline because I'm all warmed up and loosened up. And I'll hit 50 to 100 serves before I leave to go home. And that way, when I play in the morning with my friends, Oh, because you don't get a chance to loosen up. They start at 9 in the morning, and I get up around 7. Got to take my medicine and stuff like that, have a cup of coffee, start stretching out. And then by the time I get here, it's like 8 o'clock or whatever. I hit maybe for a little bit. But if you show up at 9 o'clock right on the dime when they're putting your bike down on the board, you don't even get a chance to warm up. It's like FBI, and then you start playing. So that's why, another reason, I say I like to practice at night because I'll be, you know, got a little... A little practicing before I play in the morning now I was holding back uh, on some of the on Tuesdays and Thursdays because there's a higher I guess it's a higher level of players and I was holding back a little bit because there's an age difference but some of them like to talk trash so tomorrow I will not be holding back on any of my servers or ground strokes because uh, last Thursday this guy went at me twice and hit me twice so then I, uh, it's time for me to take off the kitty gloves with these folks and uh, they, you know, when they, they play, want to play at that level and go after people and stuff, uh, I'm going to start playing at the level that I can play at and I'm not going to hold back no more because before I was just throwing a serve up and dinking it in. Now I'm going to be, 
you know, trying to hit as hard as I can on my first serves. I'm going to use more strategy on my second serves. And any ball that's short, instead of dinking it back, I'm going to rip it down the line. I'm going to play like I used to play with my friend Brett when we won and played in tournaments. So I'm not going to hold back no more. I'm going to play at the highest level that I can play tomorrow. And then I'm going to see how that progresses. And then we'll, you know, some of these guys will get the pitcher. If you're going to hit people at the net intentionally, I'm going. there's going to be other people that are going to return the favor, and it's going to be more more than they did to you. Because um, I don't mind getting hit. I didn't, you know, getting hit. It happens at tennis. But when you start targeting people, which I call head hunting, and uh, you're an amateur player, maybe a 4 0 player, maybe you're a 4 5, you don't have enough control of the ball to make it to where you're just going to hit them in the ass or their chest or something. You can seriously hurt somebody. So when people start doing that to me, I will take overheads and put them by their feet, or I will rip a ball down the line on them, you know, just to let them know uh, that I ain't going to sit there and be a punching bag for people, nor am I going to let you do that to my partner. So uh, I come out here and practice. And I have a vision of what I'm going to do tomorrow, so that's one of the reasons. And then my vision on next week when I play my first match after 22 years or 24 years, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I appreciate everybody watching. We'll be back in a minute with some more videos of uh, some ground strokes off of this machine. And I'm going to tape from behind so you can see how uh, how everything, how like how my strokes look so I can analyze them. Thanks again, everybody, and I appreciate your support. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, uh, Stefan. Thank you, Ashley. Love you guys. I appreciate your support. Thank you.